Welcome to this YSL tutorial on Report Builder 2016. In this part of the series, we're going to talk about sorting and interactive sorting in tables. We'll begin with a quick look at how you can apply sorting to the query of a data set by writing some basic SQL code. We'll then move on and look at how you can apply sorting to a table based on one or multiple columns. Then we'll look at how you can apply sorting to a group in a table. And at that point, we'll talk about the precedence of sorting so we can explain why sometimes a sort that you've applied doesn't seem to take any effect. We'll finish the video with a quick look at how you can apply interactive sorting to a table, which allows your end users to choose what order the results should appear in. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a brand new blank report in Report Builder, and I'll begin by creating a data source connecting to the YSL Movies database. As usual, if you haven't got a copy of that already, you can learn how to install it from this video and also get a link that will give you the script needed to install it. Assuming you've got that, let's head back to the data sources folder in the report data window, right click and choose to add a data source. If you've got a shared movies data source from a previous video in the series, feel free to use that one. Just in case you haven't, I'm going to create a new data source called movies. I'll create an embedded connection. I'll build my connection string because I can't be bothered typing it all in myself. Type in the server name dot backslash SQL 2016 training and then select my movies database from the drop down list. I can click OK a couple of times. And then I can create a new data set using that data source. I'm going to right click movies, choose add data set. I'll call this one films. And then from the query designer, I will select the film table. I will select the title, the release date, the runtime minutes and the Oscar wins columns. Having done that, I can click OK, click OK again. And there's the basic information I need to create this report. Next, let's create a table that we can use to display those four fields from the data set. I'll begin by right clicking on the default title text box and choosing to delete it. And then I can right click into the report, choose insert table. Then I'll just position this up towards the top left hand corner of the page. I can then either use the field selector to assign my fields. And when I've run out of columns to populate, I can click and drag remaining columns from the report data window and attach them to the table or insert them in between any two columns. So there's the basic table that I'll use to perform the sorting on. If I just change the column width to make the results a little easier to read before I preview the report, what we'll see when we run it is that the records are returned in whatever order the query returned them in. So essentially what we're seeing here is a list of the films as they are listed in the underlying SQL film table. What I'd like to do first is make sure that all of my films are sorted alphabetically by title. By far and away the best way to do that, if you want to make sure that that sort order is consistent across all of the items you add to the report, the best way is to sort the query results in the underlying query itself. The unfortunate thing is if I right click on the film's data set and choose query, the query builder doesn't provide any obvious easy way to apply sorting. Bizarrely, most of the query designers that Microsoft produce have a simple way to sort things, but not in report builder. So if we did want to sort the results in the underlying query, we have to get our hands a little bit dirty and write a tiny little bit of SQL code. To modify the SQL code of a data set, you can right click on its name and choose to view its properties. In the query box will be an SQL select statement that's generated by using the query designer tool. We can choose to modify that. This is just a plain text editor. So if we click into that text box at the end of the existing query, we can choose to add an order by clause. Now this helps a lot if you know something about how SQL works, but the basic thing we're going to write here isn't too taxing. So let's add a blank line and then we can write the two words order by. And then on the next line, we can say which column we want to use to apply the sorting to. You can see how columns are referenced in the select list here. So they start with the name of the table, followed by a full stop and then the name of the column. If you're not sure or you're not confident, you can happily just copy and paste one of these items. The, uh, the, the table name itself isn't actually that important. As long as your column names are unique in this list, then you can just refer to the column name. 
Now by default sorting in SQL works in ascending order. You can actually indicate that that's the case by saying ASC, but that is optional. If you wanted things in descending order, so let's say you were trying to sort it so that the longest film was at the top of your list, you could sort by runtime minutes and then say DESC for descending. I'd like to make sure that my films are sorted alphabetically and ascending order, so I'm going to omit that extra little feature and then just click OK to modify and update your dataset. If I simply run the report again, this time we'll see that the list of films is sorted alphabetically by name. So sorting the results of a query isn't too difficult as long as you're prepared to write some SQL. But you won't always have that opportunity depending on how your dataset is populated. For example, if you're using a store procedure, there's no way in the dataset properties dialog box to alter the sort order of those results. Fortunately, you can apply sorting to a table. Let's say we wanted to alter the sorting order completely for this table so that we see the films with the most Oscar wins at the top of the list. To do that, we can go back to the design view and then we'll need to view the tablix or tablix properties dialog box. I've got a couple of ways I can do that. So I can click into a single cell in the table and then right click on one of the gray boxes around the outside and then choose tablix properties and then click on the sorting page. A slightly quicker way to get to that part is I click cancel from this dialog box. If I select my table by just dragging a box which partially encloses it, then in the properties dialog box or the properties window, I should say, on the right hand side of the screen, I can scroll down to the other category, look for the sort expression property, click onto that and then click on the ellipsis button, the dot 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 that appears. If I do that, I jump straight into the sorting page of the Tablix Properties dialog. Now I can assign a sort order to the table by first of all adding an item to the list. I can sort by multiple columns just by adding more items. For now, I'm just going to include the Oscar wins column and I want to choose to sort it in descending order so that the larger number appears at the top of the list, so Z to A. If I click OK and then I can run the report, you'll see this time your new sort order applied to the table has superseded that applied to the underlying query. So I've got the films with the most Oscar wins at the top, followed by those with fewer Oscar wins. If I scroll down a little, it's slightly easier to show you that your original sort order hasn't been completely ignored. If I get to the section of films beginning with or winning five Oscar wins, say, it's fairly easy to see that these film names are still sorted alphabetically. So your sort order in the underlying query is still in operation. It's just that it's being applied after the sort order applied to the table itself. So sorting that you apply to a table supersedes that applied to the underlying query. There is one final place you can apply a sort order to a table in a report. If I switch back to a design view, I can apply sorting to the group items in the grouping panel. There's only one group belonging to this table at the moment. It's the details group, which corresponds to this detail row, the one with the three horizontal bars. If I right click on the details group in the, uh, in the grouping panel and view group properties, I can view the group properties dialog box and there's a sorting page on this dialog box. In a similar way to getting quickly to this page, if I have the details item selected in the groups panel, in the properties window, there's a sort expressions property and clicking the ellipsis button that appears when I select it takes me directly to that same place. This time I'm going to add a sort order which sorts in ascending order of release date. So I'm going to add a new filter, sorry, a new sort by choosing the, uh, the release date field and choosing to sort it in A to Z order. If I click OK and then run the report again, this time we can see that that one has now taken precedence over all of the other sort orders. So the group sorting has the highest level of precedence, followed by the table sorting, followed by the query sorting. You may find in other reports that sorting has been applied to lots of different places in the same report, so it's worthwhile knowing the various places you can go to check. So we've seen a few ways that you as the report designer can affect the sort order of the report. But what can be even more helpful is allowing your end users to decide what sort order should be applied. Before we get into how that works, let's start by removing a couple of the sorting levels we've applied to our report so far. 
back in the design view, let's start with the row group. I'm going to select the details object and then from the sort expressions property in the properties panel, click the ellipsis button and then we can choose to remove a sort by selecting it and then clicking the delete button. We can then click OK and then let's do the same thing for the table as well. If I select the table and then in the properties window, find the other category and then find the sort expressions property, click the ellipsis button and then select the sorting we've applied, delete that one and then click OK again. Just a quick test to make sure that our sort order is back to sorted alphabetically by film title. And then let's look at how we can apply some interactive sorting to the report. We'll start by adding a button to the header cell of the title column and the user can click on that button to change the sorting of the title field between ascending and descending order. To make that work, head back to the design view and then select the cell that you want your button to appear in. So I want my button to appear in the header cell of the title column. I can then right click on that text box and choose to view its properties. In the dialog box that appears, I can head onto the interactive sorting page. I can check this box to enable interactive sorting. I want to sort by the detail rows in that column. So we've explained the idea of the details rows, the rows with the three horizontal bars. And we can then choose which field we want to use to sort those that column. I'm going to use the drop down list and choose the obvious option. I'm going to choose to sort the title column when the user clicks in the header of that column. It might be a little bit confusing if I chose to sort by release date when the user clicks on the title. So let's stick with title. I can then click OK and then run the report again. And when I run it this time, I'll see my little button appears at the top of that column. I can click on this to alter the sort order. The first time I click on it, it sorts that column in ascending order. So it hasn't actually changed at this point. If I click the button again, it goes into descending order. And I can switch between those two just by clicking on this button. Applying interactive sorting to the other columns is just a case of following the same process. Let's head back to the design view, although it's a little tedious to do. We can select the header cell of the release date column, right click, text box properties. We can go to the interactive sorting page, check the enable interactive sorting checkbox, make sure it's set to detail rows, and then choose the appropriate field, in this case release date, and then click OK. We can then do the same thing for the runtime column, so let's right click on its header cell, text box properties, interactive sorting, enable, sort by, runtime minutes. Click OK. And the final one, Oscar wins, right click, text box properties, interactive sorting, check the box, sort by Oscar wins and click OK. At that point, we can give the report a quick test by running it. And we should see now that we can sort by any individual column in ascending or descending order, just by clicking the button that appears at the top of each column. So there we go, some basic information about sorting data sets and tables in a report. Bear in mind that some of those features will equally apply to other report items such as charts, which we'll talk about in a later video in this series. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.